Assalamualaikum and have a good day everyone. So in this video, we will learn chapter 6 sexual reproduction in flowering plants uh, in subtopic 6.3 pollination and fertilization. Okay, pollination and fertilization. The process in which pollen grain are transferred from the enter to the stigma is known as pollination. This process is assisted by pollinating, pollinating agents such as insect, mammal, birds, water and wind. The presence of pollen grain on the stigma trigger the process of fertilization. So this is the picture of formation of pollen tube and male gamete and we form the seed. So let's discuss more detail about the formation of pollen tube and male gamete. The wall of enter from matured pollen will dry, shrink and split. After that, the pollen grain in the pollen sac are released. The release pollen grain are transferred to the stigma of the same flower or different flower by pollinating agent. So we get to the picture here. This is enter. Okay. The wall of enter we measure. Okay. Dry, shrink and split. And we release the pollen grain. Pollen grain are transferred into the stigma of the same flower. This is stigma. And also transfer to the different flower by pollinating agent. Okay, after that, pollen grain that have been transferred to the stigma will germinate and form pollen tube. So, this is the structure of pollen tube. This is the pollen grain and the structure of pollen tube. The pollen tube grows down, gro grows toward the ovule through the steel. So, if we grow through along the steel, and then after that, the the generative nucleus we move along the pollen tube towards the ovule. Okay. The pollen grain, the matured pollen grain, have tube nucleus and generative nucleus. So, first of all, the tube nucleus will lead the formation of pollen tube. After that, at the same time, the generative nucleus we divide into two male gametes. Okay, at the same time, the generative nucleus we divide by mitosis to form two male gametes. So there is no generative nucleus. In this, the the pollen tube have one pollen, uh, one tube nucleus, and two male gametes. After that, okay, what happened uh, during the formation of pollen tube is the the end of pollen tube we secrete an enzyme to digest the tissue of steel. That's why the pollen tube will form, okay, by the uh, the uh, by using the enzyme. Okay, this is the picture where the pollen tube enter the micropyle. Okay, when it reaches the embryo sac, the pollen tube will penetrate yeah, the ovule through the micropyle. And then, uh, the tube nucleus will degenerate. So, look at to the picture, there is no tube nucleus. Only two male gametes. Because the tube nucleus will degenerate, and both male gamete enter the embryo sac to carry out fertilization. So this is the, this is how the pollen tube develop before the fertilization process. Okay, what is double fertilization? Okay, we we call it double fertilization because it involves two. Uh, times fertil uh, fertilization, uh, which are first fertil uh, first male gamete we fertilize the egg 
cell to form the plot zygote. Okay. Look at to the picture. This is first male gamete. We fertilize with egg cell and we form zygote to end. And the second male gamete here, second male gamete, we fuse with the polar nuclei. Okay, this is polar nuclei to form triplot endosperm, endosperm tissue. So this is triplot endosperm, endosperm tissue. Okay, let's go detail for the double fertilization. Okay, first, when the uh, when it reach the embryo sac, the pollen tube will penetrate the ovule through micropyle. So this is the pollen tube reach the ovule and then penetrate the ovule through micropyle. After that, the tube nuclear will degenerate. Okay, and enter the embryo sac. And the both male gamete will enter the embryo sac. Okay, one of the male gamete fertilize the egg. Okay, and then produce the plot zygote. And the second male gamete we fuse with the polar two polar nuclei to form endosperm nucleus. Eh, triplot endosperm nucleus. So this is uh, why uh, we call it double fertilization because involve two times fertilization. First fertilization is one uh, first male gamete fertilized with egg cell to form the protozygote and the second male gamete we fuse with the two pollen nuclei to form triplot endosperm nucleus. What is the importance of double fertilization for the survival of flowering plant? So, uh, the, the importance of double fertilization, okay, first fission of one male, uh, the male gamete with the egg cell, we produce a zygote. So, the genetic information we pass down from one generation to the next generation to the zygote and restore the haploid condition in gamete with the formation of the plot zygote. The second part is uh, the fusion of another male gamete uh, with two polar nuclei we produce endosperm tissue. What is the importance of endosperm tissue? Okay. The development of embryo for the survival of the plant species. Okay, So endosperm is uh, important for the embryo. In the eudicot, such as legume, mangoes, mustard, the endosperm is fully utilized by embryo to uh, develop before the seed matured. So eudicots have uh, two dicotyledon. Okay, two cotyledon. So it the, the it will uh, fully utilize the endosperm for the embryo. In most monocots such as coconut, wheat, barley, and corn. Only a part of endosperm is utilized for the development of embryo. Some of are stored in the cotyledon uh, to be utilized for the germination of seed. The endosperm tissue enables the embryo to survive in the seed for a long time if conditions are not favor favorable for germination to occur. So, uh, the double fertilization one is uh, to passing down the uh, genetic information through the zygote. And the second part is the produce endosperm tissue. So endosperm tissue is the uh, so, uh, is important for the embryo of the plant. Okay, embryo of the plant. But uh, the differences between the eudicot, eudicot uh, fully utilize the endosperm, but the monocot, uh, a part of endosperm is utilized, and another part uh, is stored in the cotyledon. Okay, with that, thank you.